aibon dhammo have rakkati dhammachari the one who lives by the dhamma is well protected by the dhamma so we are here today for yet another dhamma discussion through dhamma hadaya now through dhamma hadaya as you always know as you always expect we try to conduct a very fruitful dhamma discussion and we try to provide food for thought something you can take home or something you can you know a uh, sort of uh, revise and something you can practice something that you can add to your life so today as well we have come here with a very important resource person whom you have met twice before she is dr shiroma bandara who used to be a dentist uh, she has come all the way from uk of course she is a sri lankan and uh, she has had an early retirement just for the very fact i won't say mere fact the very fact of practicing the path leading to nibbana ma'am you're most welcome to our program and thank you so much for being here now for today's theme i selected mindfulness because i thought it is something important and something that we should think of we should discuss about ma'am how important do you think is mindfulness a mindfulness is a very good topic because it's the most important uh, subject or practice um, in the path and um, i would encourage everyone to be in sati it's called uh -huh. sati and mindful throughout the day so mindfulness is something you practice every moment whatever you're doing wherever you are so it is of utmost importance and should be practiced by everyone if possible every minute every moment definitely yes and uh, please also has mentioned sati in uh, about um, nine places in the satis mm -hmm. bodhi pakshika dhamma and also it comes as samma sati in the noble um, eightfold path and which leads to samadhi and it also has so many benefits of uh, that gives um, the practitioner here and now utmost um, huge amount of benefits uh, here and now so it's something that we should Uh, learn about think about and make a determination to do something uh, to every day to practice mindfulness in fact satya comes in uh, pancha indriya right indriya means like the king mm -hmm. so it's sati comes it as one of uh, pancha indriya so pancha indriya shraddha virya sati samadhi pragna this way around shraddha viriya sati mm -hmm. is the foremost one most important mm -hmm. one then samadhi pragna okay and that uh, sati has to go with wisdom mm -hmm. uh, being mindful with wisdom sihiya and nuvana and it's called sati sampajanya mm -hmm. so you're in the present moment here and now watching just watching what is happening with wisdom mm -hmm. so you're not just basically watching there's a little story that comes to my mind Please. um yeah. this um, owner of the company gets a security guard and says stand there near the gate and watch i'm going away watch this uh, factory for me mm -hmm. so he's watching and few days later uh, the um, owner comes back to find all the goods in the factory have been taken away so he asked the security guard what did you do did you watch he said yes you asked me to watch so i watched and people and came <laughs> and people took the stuff away but i watched oh my goodness so so it has to be with wisdom yeah. Uh, so we have to watch and, and just absorb what is happening mm -hmm. there sati sampajanya mm -hmm. so coming back to this uh, pancha indra um buddha says that we one who develops the pancha indra they become pancha bala five powers and those become 
uh, sat bhujangas uh, become part of your life, like a bodhi anga. So sati comes there as pancha indre, pancha bala, and as a bhujanga mm -hmm. as well. So you have to start developing it mindfully here and now. Mm -hmm. Why do you say it's a indriya? It's a king. Why are they kings? If you wonder mm -hmm. why is samadhi a king and Pragna a king and why did Buddha say they are kings? If, so I would like to know why. <laughs> yes. Venerable Dhammaji again yeah. explained this beautifully. Uh, he explained it like if you take the eye, eye is the king of seeing, isn't it? Definitely. Yes, I, no I, doubt I about can't it. hear. So I arise when seeing happens and the ear is the king of hearing and the nose is the king of smelling, tongue, king of um, tasting, and the whole body king of feeling, this is the pancha indriya. They, they are the kings now, so the eye is the king of seeing. So when one is in mindfulness and every time seeing happens, you are in mindfulness with prajna. All five actually work because you have shraddha in Buddha's word, you are doing this, uh, and you put effort to get mindfulness in the present moment whenever you see and then mindfulness works foremost, forerunner and then there is like one pointed concentration that comes when seeing happens, your mind is not running all away and mm -hmm. you are not in a daydream, so there is some samadhi and this is done with wisdom. So every moment when mindfulness works, all five actually work together and they are concentrated. And then what actually happens is though seeing happens, the eye has been the king. Now there is mm -hmm. a kingdom and there is a king seeing. And okay. this mindful, king called mindfulness is, has come and taken over. Now when the seeing happens, it is the mindfulness that starts seeing. There is difference in the seeing because this uh, s the eye which sees will s tell you, what you see is pleasant, mm -hmm. pleasurable, and it's uh, permanent. Mm -hmm. And it, there is an I, there's Atta, Subha, mm -hmm. Sukha, Nitya, Atta. Mm -hmm. So the mi mindfulness key king comes and takes over the I, and now is looking, seeing, and the mindfulness king says, this is, he's seeing with Pragna mm -hmm. that this is Anicca, Dukkha, anatta. So impermanent. Impermanent and because it's impermanent it will cause suffering mm -hmm. and of course it's happening and uh, out of your control so it's not yours, there is no self. Mm -hmm. So now this mindful, every time you are in the present moment <laughs> practicing mindfulness, this mindfulness king goes and takes over the king of seeing, king of hearing, king of smelling, king of tasting king of feeling. So there is the battle between the two kings mm -hmm. because most of the time you f forget to be mindfulness. So That's the a lovely example. King of, mm. Yes, the I will play the ground and his uh, kingdom is seeing pleasures and, and takes you for a good ride. The so every way. time you get with the virya, the mindfulness king to come and that king will show another picture. Mm -hmm. And the more you practice, more the mindfulness king will be take powerful. over the kingdoms, mm -hmm. be powerful, and one day completely take over. And wherever you look, whatever you hear, whatever you feel, taste, and smell, it will be the king of mindfulness in those um, sense bases. So yeah. that mm -hmm. is Indriya. So the Pancha Indriya takes over these five sense basis and um, in Buddha's teachings he says this becomes complete when you have reached the first stage of enlightenment mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. without effort wherever they are um, those who have reached the first stage of enlightenment will be seeing with Anicca Dukkha Anatta mostly and then there onwards this um, Arya Shravaka who practices that will make those kings so powerful, they become bala, strengths. Mm -hmm. And uh, that 
it happens when the Anangami stages are reached, the Bala happens. And then there onwards it's all Bojangas developing to a um, Arahatship and then you become all that Bodhi Angas. Mm -hmm. so, um, so now you can practically see how those two kings are fighting <laughs> yes. and let the mindfulness king example, take mm. over and do what he had to do. And, and allow all the all to concentrate one and say if with the five you can pick up things, stir things, do a lot of things. So five together is strength. Five together in the eye, five together in the ear, mm -hmm. nose, tongue, body is absolute strength and in the path. So that is uh, one way of looking at practicing mindfulness here and now. Mm -hmm. And um, of course now we know uh, it's explained to um, greater detail in Satipatthana Sutra. One of, mm -hmm. It's like the Bible, it's, it's the handbook of Buddhist meditation practice, uh, Sati. Sammasati is the four Satipatthanas. And we, as we know, the first one is Kaya Nupassana. And uh, Kaya Nupassana is um, watching the body mm -hmm. and understanding the body, arising of the body and passing away of the body and realizing what the body is by the body, by using and watching, being aware of the body. So mm -hmm. that is Kaya Nupassana. And okay. Vedana Anupassana, again, as feelings arise, uh, being aware of the feelings arising, passing, understanding, realizing mm -hmm. what feeling is. And um, Chitta Anupassana, as mm -hmm. you know, is about the thought processes and Loba Moha Dvesha and um, arising, how and what they are, and passing and understanding and realizing what it is. Once you realize, they have no power. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dhamma Anupasana is all about phenomena all around what happens, um, how the Four Noble Truths is working everywhere and how the five aggregates and um, five clinging aggregates work. So all that would be for Dhamma Anupasana. Mm -hmm. So all the four um, sections fall in the Satipatthana and um, I would strongly suggest if you can't ha find time to sit and meditate, uh, <laughs> at least do this. Most teachers, even Venerable Dhamma Jiva says, mm -hmm. just being in sati, through mindfulness, there will be liberation. All the insights will open up as you are in mindfulness through the day. Of course, developing samadhi will help and enhance you to practice um, mindfulness. Um, and it will protect you. Mm -hmm. And this little story again comes to me about the little katikurulla. Mm -hmm. uh, you know about that. Uh, this tiny little bird was, um, as I remember, uh, the mother tells the little bird, mm -hmm. don't go wandering everywhere. It's dangerous, so stay under the rock. So the mother flies away to get the food. And the little bird, the catechorilla things, gets a bit mischievous and says, I'll just trot around a little bit and come back. Yeah. And as he goes over the tr uh, rock, trotting around, a huge big eagle comes mm -hmm. and sees this little tiny catechorilla, swoops down, picks up the catechorilla and flies away. Mm -hmm. And at, up in the air, now this little catechorilla thinks, what has happened to me now? I didn't listen to my mum and starts pleading with the um, eagle saying, drop me down, drop me, just for once drop me. Mm -hmm. And um, the eagle thinks, oh well this is a tiny little bird, I will drop him <laughs> and then I yeah. will come down and pick him once again very quickly. So okay, you want me to drop you, I will drop you. So he drops the little bird down and as soon as the bird is on the rock, he trots down and goes under the rock. Mm -hmm. And the eagle comes sweeping down and hits the rock and dies. Mm -hmm. So here, the, that is the territory, the safe territory under the rock. And Buddha compares that to being in, practicing the Satipatthana and being in Satya. Wow. You have all that protection mm -hmm. from outside. In fact, the protection I feel comes protection from your own mind. 
the mind's defilements. Yeah. Because you, when you're in sati, when you're in the present moment, you are away from suffering. Mm -hmm. And then you, there is no new karma being made. And when the uh, karma vipaka hits you, you are not dragged into suffering because you're here and now watching the rising and passing. Yeah. And then there is calm, serenity, inner happiness here and now. And also such protection. And when you practice it um, continuously, you feel that Buddha Dhamma Sangha is there because that mm. is your safe place, yeah. not outside. Definitely. So Buddha is there, the whole Dhamma is in the present moment when you are in Sati because you are protected from all defilements and evil and suffering. And you are Sangha being that. Mm. So Buddha Dhamma Sangha, all three are there. In, yeah. in sati. And Mama, Mama, as you said, like um, being in Sati. Now, if you just happen to say, if you do not have time mm. to sit and meditate, at least be mindful of whatever you do, of your daily routine. Mm. But what happens to most of us is, like, we might be mindful now. Whenever we are busy with our work, we might be mindful for a, for a few minutes, but then again, we are usually either in the future or in the past. That's what happened to us. Yes. So I think it needs a lot of practice. Yes, we a lot of mm -hmm. effort, determination. Mm -hmm. Like we uh, discussed in the last program that now we are in the path. We have yeah. to carry on with that sakko mm -hmm. quality. I can do it. And the determination mm -hmm. and that sense of the path, sense of the goal where you're going. So just like the medical student, just come back there mm -hmm. and keep your uh, mindfulness mm -hmm. um, going. And you can do a few things we do, um, there we used to do, is to put some stickers everywhere. Okay. So you get up and 10 minutes you're in mindfulness and it's gone. So we put yeah. uh, letter S all <coughs> over the house. On mm -hmm. the mirror when you go to comb the hair, brush the teeth, you see the S and switch back to Sati. Okay. At least when you go to make your tea, we have S in the sugar bowl or your cup, mug, S is there. You go to workplace, right in front in the, on your board or your telephone or computer, big S there for Sati. So it, as soon as you see Sati, you sure. sm come back, come it's back, come idea. back. Yeah. And then some of our groups, uh, the younger ones who have very busy lives, they have this habit of um, texting. Mm -hmm. Whenever they come on Sati, they send a text to the group friends, just two words, Sati or S. So a text comes, ting, <laughs> they fall, <laughs> all, all the friends all around, wherever they are in London, mm -hmm. fall into Sati. And someone else comes to Sati, they send mm -hmm. a text. So they keep it's lovely. Re reminding each other yeah. to fall into Sati. Um, little different things. And uh, I remember uh, Venerable Hene Gunaratna's book, mm -hmm. he has mentioned to keep your uh, mobile um, a little alarm every hour for a little beep to come. Okay. So every hour this beep will remind you to be in sati mm -hmm. and mindfulness. It just reminds you and it that you need that only for a few months or a few weeks and uh, suddenly you find that uh, the mind falls there. So see the mind is calling you to be there. Suddenly the mind is already there. It becomes easier and easier. So the mind becomes practiced or programmed. Programmed, to sati yes. And it, it becomes like, it be begins to realize mm -hmm. that here and now is safe. Mm -hmm. And here and now is happiness. And here and now it's serene and calm and it's better. Mm -hmm. And it keeps coming back. And then it becomes a habit because you mm -hmm. do something over and over again. Mm -hmm. It becomes a habit. So most of the time, and you're here and it comes to a stage when thinking happens, it becomes very heavy. You find as if it's very heavy and it's a suffering. Yeah. Thinking starting, uh, even the one thoughts coming, it's very um, out of sync, out mm -hmm. of balance mm -hmm. and the mind brings it back to the uh, present moment. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is to make that effort or a determination early in the morning 
um, today I am going to be in mindfulness. Now, uh, make a determination now, tomorrow morning I am going to be in mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I remember last time we discussed about uh, Dhatu Manasikare. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to Kaya Anupasana, there are quite uh, six or seven meditations there, mm -hmm. which we can actually do throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed in full the Dhatu Manasikare, which is one of my favorite meditations, yeah. that uh, we talked about how as the eyes open and you feel the hardness of the pillow, the sheets, the softness, coolness, and um, how when you walk, get out, walk, the hardness of the floor, touch the door, hardness, hardness, wash the face, cool water on your face, hardness and cool water, wateriness. So go going the whole day if you can go with um, the Atumanasikara and what happens to your mind when you're in the present mm -hmm. moment, uh, mm -hmm. watching the Dhatu. Mm -hmm. So that is one of uh, one meditation everyone can do. Yeah. Um, uh, secondly, um, today I would like to actually um, take you through uh, another meditation mm -hmm. which uh, is in Kaya Nupasana, but most people skip it. It seems so simple. Mm -hmm. and it seems as if it's worthless, pointless doing it. It is Iriyapata Bhavana, okay. postural meditation. That is, um, whenever you are in the posture, say, sitting, being aware that you are sitting. And as you get up, become aware, I'm standing. Now you're walking, be aware, I'm walking. Mm -hmm. And when you're lying down, become aware, you're sleeping. So the four postures, mm -hmm. just doing that. And you might think, well, do it for five minutes and you get mm -hmm. fed up and then your mind is running away and this is not doing anything for me. Um, in fact, we all came across this article in the internet, um, one of our teachers sent mm -hmm. to us, Naja Naib in Thailand, mm -hmm. in his kuti, with, it's a discussion between his student and himself mm -hmm. after doing this uh, postural meditation. And uh, here we found how what a lot of truth, um, absolute truth comes out of this meditation. Mm -hmm. um, it goes, uh, it, it, you can turn it to mm -hmm. um, actually touch those truths, realize mm -hmm. those truths. So it goes like this, say um, if you're sitting, you're sitting down and sit as long as you want mm -hmm. and then see Watch your mind and then here comes um, an intention, uh, unsatisfactoriness, mm -hmm. some restlessness, mm -hmm. I want to get up. And then see what happened, there came dukkha, suffering. And then so another thought comes, I want to get up. Mm -hmm. So you get up, mm -hmm. now you are standing. Okay. Now you stand, we actually practically do this meditation, mm -hmm. uh, stand and wait, stand and wait. In one place? One place, mm -hmm. just stand thinking, being aware I'm standing and just watch the mind what happens. After a little while what happens is boredom, restlessness and then the mind says, I want to walk. You might even see people walking and think, oh they're walking in a better place. Mm. I want to walk. So they look at the mind, what happened? There is this unsatisfactoriness, suffering, dukkha arose. And another intention, because the tanha is telling you to go to a better place. Tanha is asking for something else. Mm -hmm. So you walk. You walk, you walk. You're aware, you're walking, you walk. And what happens? You want to stop mm -hmm. walking. You want to come and sit. You see the people sitting and think, they are sitting, oh, I want to sit. So you sit, you're back in the same old position. Yeah. And then you wander there, you were walking, you got fed up with it, Dukkha rose, Tanha wants something else, and the mind gives a signal and the body reacts, comes and sits. So cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, mm -hmm. back to the sitting. Mm -hmm. Sit for a while and you find it happens again. So isn't this what happens throughout the day? Sure. 
Absolutely, isn't it? So and uh, it passes without us noticing it. Yes, exactly. How many times do we change our posture, but do we notice? Yes, really? and do you know why? So here we see the moment to moment arising of suffering and the tanha working mm -hmm. and how our uh, mind is giving instruction, the manu sankara to kaya sankara cause and effect and how the mind is following mind and body following tanha, avidya and this whole um, drama we act through morning till night. Yeah. So yeah. just by this simple meditation of um, watching the postures, you came across dukkha and how that the temporary happiness you get from sitting to standing, you happiness. Mm. And then what happened to that happiness? went away and then again boredom and uh, restlessness came. So dukkha. So sukha is anicca, dukkha is anicca and both come, sukha finish, dukkha comes, dukkha finish, sukha comes and we are following both over and over again throughout the day. Yeah. So once you start yeah. doing this meditation at least for a, a half an hour or whenever you are working, even being aware of this and how this process is happening. It's a deep understanding. And what happens, you stop following this tanha mm -hmm. like crazy. Mm -hmm. And just uh, uh, with this pragna, uh, put a stop to it. You are not a slave to it anymore. Yes. Mm, so that's one mm -hmm. in Kaya Nupasana you can do. And uh, of course, uh, very profound med um, activity. We are walking all the time during the day, becoming aware of your walking and mm -hmm. what happens as you put one step ahead of the other. So uh, that even uh, Venerable Dhammaji will recommends highly this walking meditation that everyone mm -hmm. should do. It's good physically and it's good for your Dhamma practice and also um, it will make you develop your Samadhi as well as your Vipassana through the walking. Um, all the insights will unfold through the walking meditation. Mm -hmm. So um, we will do a little demonstration of walking meditation if you, might, um, want, if you want to try. Sure, we'll definitely yeah. try it. Okay. Okay, now we will do some walking meditation. Now let's stand where we are, still. Even if you close your eyes, just become aware of your body. There's heaviness weighing down to the ground. Slight movement of the air pushing the tummy and the chest. It's a solid. And the temperature change. And watery, moist. Become aware of this solid, the body. Now as we start walking, see how the intention arises in the mind. And at the beginning, we will just walk left and right, being aware of the left and the right. Open your eyes and focus about a meter ahead of you. And you start walking left forward, put it down, and the right, forward, put it down. This part of the meditation you can even do a little faster so that it builds your samadhi. Just be aware that your mind gives an instruction and the body follows it.
and we can slowly move around and see how the mind gives the instruction to turn around and the body follows it. Again left and right. And when the left goes, right is not there. When the right goes forward, the left is not there. Just be aware. And here, see how the flower pot falls on your eye and the message is sent to the body to stop, turn around and the body turns around, process of causes and effect. Now this time if we go left, lift and put down and lift and put it down. Lifting put it down. You see how lifting starts, lifting finish, put it down. Lifting starts, it's put down, it's finished. And the mind says lift and the leg is lifted. Mind says put it down, leg is put down, cause and effect. And here see the mind stays lift and it's finished. Leg is lifted, it's finished. Mind says put it down and that is finished. And the leg is put down and that is finished. Now put the foot down like the Vilumba down, heel down and see when the heel touches the carpet how the sensation arise and then the whole foot. First put the heel down and then allow the rest of the sole to come down and watch how the two hard surfaces, the sole and the carpet touch rupa rupa and the danima sensation arise, the nama. Again, when the sole of the foot touches the carpet, rupa, rupa, hardness, hardness, touch, and the sensation arise as the foot touches, sensation arise. This is more of a vipassana. Sensation arise and sensation spread as the two surfaces touch. And then we can see as the two, the foot is taken up, the two hard surfaces separate and the sensation is gone, the reverse. When the two hard surfaces are not there, no mind doesn't go there and no sensation. So that is one meditation, walking meditation mm -hmm. and um, uh, I think uh, everyone might benefit if we talk about Anapanasati meditation, do you think? Yes, definitely because I think uh, it is a very popular method of uh, meditation and it is something that uh, the Buddha has also used and even as Prince Siddhartha he has uh, used so because of that probably it's a very very uh, popular method of meditation I think we should try it yes we can we can uh, we can we can try it now a yeah. little bit. Um, I like to uh, mention this Anapanasati Sutra, mm -hmm. um, which uh, is worth reading. It this has uh, sixteen steps, and okay. the very first step is just watching mm -hmm. the long in breath, as long in breath, and yeah. long out breath, as long out breath, yeah. and the sixteenth step is Nibbana. 
So it's a profound sutra, mm -hmm. and um, we we can actually have that as a guideline of when we do um, vipassana through um, anapanasati meditation. Anapanasati uh, we can use to develop samadhi yeah. and go to jhanas as well as for vipassana. So um, very basic instructions I can give, and then the rest will follow automatically mm -hmm. as you do. So, okay, let's do for about five, ten minutes. Sure. And if we sit comfortably, allow all the muscles to relax. And our back is straight, erect, and at ease. The mind is in the present moment. The past has arisen and passed and is non-existent. The future hasn't arisen yet and non-existent. The present is here and now. The awareness in the environment is peaceful, is silent and serene. Let's bring the awareness to the breath. As the breath touches the nostrils, just watch. Being aware of the long in breath as the long in breath and the long out breath as the long out breath. So allow the breathing to happen naturally and we are just watching. And as the breath gets shorter and more subtle, let's watch the short in-breath as the short in-breath and a short out-breath as a short out-breath. We can watch the beginning, middle and end of each breath and beginning, middle and end of the out breath. Also try to touch the gap between the breaths, the beginning, middle, end of in breath, a gap beginning, middle and end of out breath. Short gap. Beginning, middle, end of the in breath. Just let go to the gap. And beginning, middle and end of the out breath. Totally let go to the gap. The breath is getting shorter. and shorter as if you can feel the whole breath in breath and out breath. Here we can become aware of the air column touching the nostril, hardness of the air touching the hardness of the nostril, patavi, the air stream flowing, vayu, the coolness and the warmth, tejo, and 
and the moist and the cohesivity of the breath apo just being aware if you hear sound just focus on the sound how it arises and pass and come back to the breath and have no aversion to the sound if there are thoughts just become aware of the thoughts they too have a beginning middle and end then come back to the breath have no aversion to the thoughts as they arise they pass if you have physical pain just focus on the pain for a while they too will arise and pass come back to the breath and let's watch till the breath gets subtle it's as if you can't distinguish between in breath out breath they are both the same very very short and allow the breath to disappear when it disappears and just be you feeling happiness let that grow there's brightness i love the brightness to be and just watch be content watching no expectations just content okay we can take a deep breath and open our eyes Hope you found that useful. Yes, I think uh, that's really useful. And ma'am, uh, when you come to the stage where the breathing gets very subtle, I think uh, one might because sometimes I have gone through this experience. Like you get the fear, what is happening to my breath? Where is it? What yeah. is going to happen to me? Yes, especially so, when yeah. the breath disappears, you yeah. start panicking yeah. and get. restless yeah and uh, what you have to do is to then have confidence mm-hmm. that this is the path that buddha has taught and that is where i'm going nothing is going to happen and once you have told your mind this when it happens then the mind is quite confident to so just go through it mm-hmm. allow that to go mm-hmm. and um, why we do beginning middle and end uh, mm-hmm. by watching the beginning middle and end over and over again i find the mind gets this message that every phenomena has a beginning middle and end so whenever sure. you get angry there is a beginning and if you catch the anger at the middle you just wait till it ends if you have any defilement there is a beginning middle and end if you have dukkha sad feeling you know here is a beginning there is a middle you just wait for it to go and you know that it will go so that's so, what the buddha explained as utpada titi bhanga yes, of thoughts so then it will all disappear so you mm-hmm. don't have to rush and react and mm-hmm. make it worse so the mind absorbs it so that it restrains mm-hmm. uh, then also another fact is when you when the breath gets very short as if mm-hmm. you don't quite know the distinguish between the in breath out breath mm-hmm. then you wonder who is calling it in breath out breath they are both the same <laughs> they are both arising and yeah. passing 
and then the brain gets a message who is saying what is good and bad, who is saying this is how I should be, should not be, what is sukha, what is dukkha, what is black, what is white. Mm -hmm. They all arise and pass, they all arise and pass. So your mind becomes non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you are in mindfulness, it is a non-judgmental watching, like mm -hmm. evenly suspended, not biased, mm -hmm. just watching and you accept whatever happens. Dukkha is okay, Sukha is okay, good is okay, bad is okay, sun is okay, rain is okay. So your mind gets trained to that and you fall into a realm of upekka mm -hmm. inside. And this is just by following these four um, steps of anapanasati, but mm -hmm. doing it with wisdom. Mm -hmm. So keep practicing it, and then the mind will know that all phenomena arise and pass. So there's no need to be judgmental and have sorrow and happiness. It's all uh, unnecessary. Just yeah. And also you don't need to worry about the time you, because the time also like uh, you're not concerned about the time when you're in deep meditation. Meditation, yes, that's right. And it passes. Mm -hmm. yes, it becomes akalika mm -hmm. in that sense. So Dhamma is akalika, so you go to that realm. So Anapana, this is only four steps of the 16 steps we okay, did. Yeah. And then uh, beyond that uh, you can go ahead uh, uh, practicing. And um, when, the, when the breath disappears and you mm -hmm. go into the light and here if you want to uh, do samadhi, you can concentrate on the light and go to develop samadhi and keep the mind there without thoughts for about at least 45 minutes and then mm -hmm. you develop good samadhi and mm -hmm. it might go to jhana mm -hmm. even. But beautiful happiness, bliss mm -hmm. and um, Happy for light. no reason. Yes, <laughs> inner bliss. Allow it to come, encourage mm -hmm. it and be in it. Don't think it is a glacier and all that will come later. But as it comes, just let it be there and enjoy it, the bliss of meditation. So that is all about the bliss of meditation, the bliss of being mindful. So thank you very much, ma'am, for uh, sharing your knowledge. I think uh, knowledge, it's not just knowledge, but talking through experience. So that's the difference. So I want, it's, it's a call for action, not just a Dhamma discussion. We want all of you to practice mindfulness as much as possible. So thank you very much for being with us. And let us meet the next week with another Dhamma discussion, which is going to be of extreme use to you. Thank you so much. May the most noble triple gem bless you.